Hello, my name is Lauren Toplitz, and I'm delighted to be here with you today to introduce to you the trumpet. I've been a member of the Akron Symphony Orchestra trumpet section for 20 years. During this time, I've had the good fortune to perform with many amazing colleagues in the orchestra, as well as some fabulous guest artists and our amazing conductor, Maestro Christopher Wilkins. And now I get to share a bit of what I know about the trumpet with all of you. But before we get into the nitty gritty of the trumpet, we need to take a step back and figure out what family of the orchestra the trumpet is a part of. As you may have learned in school, the orchestra has several different types of instruments which are grouped into sections which we casually refer to as families. A family of instruments all have similar characteristics with each other. There are four families of instruments in the orchestra. The string family, the woodwind family, the brass family, and the percussion family. The trumpet is a member of the brass family. The brass family is comprised or made up of the trumpet section, the French horn section, the trombone section, and the tuba. So what do all of these instruments have in common that make them part of the same family? Well, you probably guessed it by now. They're all made from brass. But the metal which they are made of is not the only thing that bonds this family. All of these instruments produce their sound when the musician buzzes their lips into a mouthpiece like this. You can actually even buzz a song just on the mouthpiece. Now, each of the four different types of instruments in the brass section plays in a different range, how high or low they typically play. This is a lot like the voices you would hear in a choir, soprano, alto, tenor, and bass. The trumpets are the high voices, the French horns are like the altos, the trombones are like the tenors, and the tuba is like our bass section. Something else you may have noticed about the brass instruments is their different sizes. The smaller the instrument, the higher the pitches they are able to produce. The larger the instrument, the lower the pitches they are able to produce. So the trumpets play the high notes in the brass family, while the huge tuba gets to pump out the low notes. But just like a good choir, we all need to blend together and play in tune. So let's get back to the trumpet. I'll start by identifying some of its parts. The mouthpiece, as we've already learned, is what the trumpeter buzzes his or her lips on to make a sound. That sound then travels into the lead pipe of the trumpet. From there, the trumpet starts getting pretty twisty and curvy as the vibrations from that buzzing start making their way through all four feet ten inches of the trumpet before they finally emerge from the bell sounding like, hopefully, a million bucks. Basically, the trumpet acts like a big amplifier. So the better sounding the buzz that you can make on just the mouthpiece, the better sounding tone you'll have when you put the mouthpiece in the trumpet. Finally, you've probably noticed these buttons on my trumpet. Well, they're actually called valves. When they are pressed, they redirect the air through different sets of pipes on the trumpet. By pressing down various combinations of these three valves, along with changing the buzzing coming from out of my lips, I'm able to play all of the different notes in the chromatic scale. The trumpet didn't always have these nifty valves. Long ago, the trumpet was just a curved piece of tubing with a mouthpiece on one end and a bell on the other. Even though this limited the early trumpet's musical capabilities, there were still plenty of opportunities for it to be heard. You've probably heard of a bugle, which is basically a small, valveless trumpet. 
They have been used by the military to signal troop maneuvers as far back as the ancient Romans. It was an excellent choice for military commanders who needed to give large numbers of soldiers and the cavalry audible commands while they were spread out on a large noisy battlefield. The bugler would relay the commanding officer's orders by playing a specific bugle call, which the troops could easily identify and follow. Today, even though buglers are no longer used out on the battlefield, you might still hear a bugler or a trumpeter playing to the colors for a flag raising or taps at the funeral of a fallen soldier. I will play to the colors for you now on my trumpet. If you look carefully, you will notice that I am not pressing down any of my valves to play this bugle call, just like an actual bugle, which would not have had any valves. my presentation for you today with one more performance. The piece I will be playing is The Carnival of Venice, arranged by Jean-Baptiste Arbin. I will be performing the introduction and the theme from this piece. I hope you enjoy it. so much for allowing me to talk about the trumpet with you. It's really been a pleasure for me to be able to make this presentation. Keep practicing, keep listening, and always keep music in your heart. <laughs>